Hi, so in this video we are going to be looking at the final good sector of this Roma research and development model. I said in the previous video where I introduced all the concepts that we have three sectors of this economy, so check out that video for a brief introduction, but it makes some sense to begin by solving the problem in the final goods sector because this is the final sector and so what we're going to be doing is a conditional optimization just making some assumptions about what the other two sectors have done so this final goods sector will be maximizing given the decisions in the other sectors and what we can then do is solve the optimization problems in the intermediate goods sectors and in the research and development sector and then we can get some overall conclusions from this model so what we begin with in the final goods sector is we have a production function and we have our output here which is governed by this y parameter and this production function looks a little bit different to the ones that we have been using uh, in the past, like Cobb Douglas production functions, because here we have as one of the inputs is going to be our labor. And notice that this is subscripted by Y. So this is labor that is being used in the final goods sector. So the Y is referring to the fact that we're in this sector or that we're producing this output Y. And this is weighted by its share of the income as usual by the power of one minus alpha but then we're also multiplying by a load of different intermediate goods which are these X's and so there's not just one other input into production we have lots of intermediate goods X which we might index by X I and, and this X and this I goes from one all the way up to a and the reason we use a is the highest possible good you may get some intuition already from the fact that we use a as our technology parameter but once we solve this problem it's going to become much more clear why we use a in this production function and each of these is weighted by alpha so if we were to sum all of these together and these these were all assumed to be equal then we we would have something very similar to what we would have in a Cobb Douglas production function it is worth noting that the marginal product of each of these individual intermediate goods, if we don't use any of these goods, or we, we have, let's say we have x3 is equal to zero, then the marginal, the marginal product of that good will be infinite. So we, we can find the marginal product by just differentiating the output with respect to a particular good xi and we'll get out that this is equal just to this derivative uh, xi to the alpha minus one and so we can see that this alpha minus one we we could just write this as ly to the one minus l or ly over xi all to the one minus alpha and so if xi goes to zero then this marginal product is going to tend to infinity um, as, so yeah Basically, firms are going to want to use all the intermediate goods that they can get, and these intermediate goods are coming from the intermediate goods sector. And we're going to solve that problem in the next video of the intermediate goods sector. But in this problem, we're just going to take this as given, and there's some supply of intermediate goods to the final goods sector. And so a firm in the final goods sector is going to have its profit maximization problem, given this, where it can maximize its profits pi with respect to its labor input and its input of these intermediate goods xi. So its profits are just given by its output function minus the wage multiplied by the amount of labor it employs as usual and then also minus the price of each of these intermediate goods multiplied by the quantity of these intermediate goods that we use. So often we would have seen here where we just have the rental rate of capital multiplied by the capital stock, but instead we've got the price of each of these intermediate goods, which we just call P and subscript it by the number of each good. And we just multiply it by the X value of our intermediate goods. So then what we do is we'll take our first order conditions notice that we have an awful lot of first order conditions here we're, we're not just maximizing with respect to l 
or labor and x, we're maximizing with respect to labor and x1, x2, x3, and so on, all the way up to xa. So we would have lots of first order conditions. And what we're going to do is just take, do the first order condition for a general xi, and it would just be the same for each no, each different intermediate good. We just have we just replace the i with a one, two, three, or so on. So if we take the derivative of the profit function um, with respect to our labor, we will just simply get this um, first order condition out, and we can rearrange it to get our wage rate in the final goods sector. So we have a perfectly competitive final goods sector, which is an assumption we've made. And so our wage rate is just equal to the marginal product of labor, which is given by this expression here. And we can do the same by taking the first order condition with respect to each of the intermediate goods. And again, we'll, we'll just get out this condition where the price of each intermediate good is equal to its marginal product. And so this price is just gov governed effectively by the demand for this good in the final good sector or the firm that's producing it. And we will later find what the supply is looking like when we look at the intermediate goods sector in the next video. But okay, th this is just the maximization problem in the final goods sector. Pretty standard stuff. The only interesting thing is just that we have a new sort of uh, production function. And so I was trying to give a bit of intuition there in this video. So check out the playlist for the next video, which will be on the intermediate goods sector. Make sure to like this video if it was at all useful. That would really help me out. And do subscribe to get some extra economics in your subscription feed.